You will save thousands of dollars by avoiding these 13 car flipping mistakes in today's video. This car flipping mistake is almost a no-brainer. It's essentially overpaying for the car that you want to purchase. Do not overpay. Make sure you're using websites like Kelly Blue Book, looking at trends on Facebook Marketplace, other websites to see what the going rate is for the car that you're looking at. By overpaying, you're essentially cutting your margins in half, burning money and just throwing it out the window, when instead doing a little research will make sure you pay the correct amount for the car you're looking for. And lastly, those same numbers on Kelly Blue Book for a dealer trade-in is what you could probably get for if you wholesale it to a dealer compared to private party. So all those numbers are valuable. Number two is ignoring the repair cost. And this is a critical thing that you need to make sure you know your numbers on by knowing what parts you're going to replace, what parts are broken, what things you can get away with not fixing, but generally just making sure you have your numbers laid out so you know what your profit will be. I'm talking breaks floor mats, trim, carpet, mirrors, headlights, all the different components in the car that are clearly broken or need replaced. And then you have to factor in brakes and also oil changes or things like that if you choose to do them. So the easiest way to track all this is just create a general spreadsheet that you use every time you flip a car to calculate and add up all those numbers. Number three is lack of research. And this one goes along with figuring out where are you buying and selling these cars. For me, that is Ohio and it is January. So it is cold, it is snowy, it is winter. It's not a good time to be trying to sell a Mazda Miata convertible that is rear wheel drive or any rear wheel drive convertible for that matter. It is just not a prime time, whereas a buyer would get a steal, but as a seller, you will definitely lose money comparatively in selling it in the summertime. Now, the easiest way to do this is just go to Google and type in top selling used cars under $5,000. $5,000 being your budget, if that's what it is, it will give you a list of those cars sold that year, most typically. You got your Honda Civics, your Toyota Camrys, your Honda Odysseys, your Ford F-150 pickups, the general contenders that everybody in the United States is probably gonna need. It's just an easy category to get into and you know the car will sell. As long as you get a good price on it, it will sell. That's the best part about these types of cars. Number four is rushing the flip process. And rushing the flip process is as simple as not buying everything brand new and trying to get the car sold as quickly as possible and just maximizing your spend on all of these parts. Whereas you could have gone to a junkyard to find most of them, bought them on eBay used as well, or Facebook Marketplace, and just took a little extra time to shop around, maximize your profit by just slowing down and finding the parts used. There's tons of used components that you can get that are not critical, that will never be noticed by a potential buyer. So definitely take your time and get the car cleaned up and looking as best as it can, maximizing your profit. Mistake number five is neglecting the aesthetics. The aesthetics are any visual component of the car that is gonna drive your sale or not. And the easy ones to redo are cleaning up the headlights, making sure they're not yellowed, making sure that they work well, the bulbs are all replaced and there's none missing, cleaning the exhaust tips or any chrome on the car, making sure trim is restored, making sure it is bright black instead of faded and looking like it's been sitting in the sun for years. Wiper blades are replaced, making sure the glass is clean on the inside and outside because clean glass goes a long way. It's also not easy to do, so if you get it right, it goes a long way to the seller and also just making sure everything is detailed perfectly on the inside and outside. Cleaning it and making sure those extra details, there's nothing for that buyer to nitpick, goes a long way to making sure you maximize your profit. Easy things that you can do, but just take time, are polishing the paint, making sure you've removed all trash from the car, dye the carpets so they're better instead of spending the money to buy new ones. Little things like that are more time consumable than actually money consumable. So keep that in mind, if it makes that much of a difference on the outside of the car, it's worth the extra time. Next is not building a network. That is a huge mistake to make, especially when you have opportunities that come presented to you on super unique options. Like this is a party bus. Buying a party bus to flip does not seem like a common thing, but if you have somebody that knows someone that needs a party bus or has that type of business, you have an easy in, you can split the actual profit at the end of the day if they bring you the sale. There's tons of ways to plan this out, but building your network is key. Next is overlooking the vehicle history report. This is like getting a Carfax report for your specific VIN number. It does cost money to run that report, but running it up front for the vehicle, one, allows you to make sure that you're buying a valued investment and something you can make profit on, but when you then go around to turn her over and sell the car, you can present the Carfax report to that new potential buyer and essentially making it look like you have nothing to hide because, hey, here's the Carfax report for free. 
ignoring market trends. And this could be as simple as gas prices driving, you know, if fuel's high, more fuel efficient vehicles, if fuel's low, bigger, more exotic type cars, or just even considering the electric hybrid kind of philosophy. If you're in California, electric and hybrid is probably more sought after than say in Ohio or New York. You know, the uh, different areas of the country drive different types of vehicles. So keep that in mind. Mistake number nine is not investing in your education. And this could be something where you work in an auto body shop as a mentor or spend hours and hours and hours online and researching, taking notes day after day. Or you can bypass all that time by signing up for my Car Flipping 101 course. Originally $199, and just for this month, I'm selling it for $19.99. Not planning for the unexpected, and this is because repairs and issues will pop up on certain vehicles that you will never have planned on because that's just how it works sometimes. So when you're figuring out your budget for how much you're buying it for and your profit margin, you're always going to factor in a small fudge number. And this fudge number is solely just to cover the unexpected because it will happen. And then that way when you're working on the next car and you have more fudge volume from the previous car you didn't use, you can cover the big expenses because those will happen too. Next is not factoring in taxes. And this isn't just sales tax and all that fun stuff. I'm talking about Uncle Sam's cut that he asked from the good old IRS because when you finish all of these flips and you have all this profit, you need to factor in 40% going to the federal government to pay for your taxes. And that could be also city and state and local. So there's a lot of different factors there. But if you're smart and listen to what I say about having a LLC or some sort of business, all of your expenses, your drive time, your fuel, all of those things are deductions and write-offs based on that income that you make to lower your actual taxes owed. I'm not a tax professional, but that's just simply how it works. Market saturation, and this one's an easy one because when you're going through Facebook Marketplace and you see 150 Toyota Camrys within a two mile radius of you, the likelihood of you selling your Toyota Camry is not, so don't try to buy one of those. The other way to do that is go on eBay, go on the different auction websites, and if there's like 50 of the same car rolling down the line or if there's a bunch listed, stay away from it. So that is where the big part is of making sure you're not in an oversaturated niche. Next is overestimating your DIY skill set. And this is essentially taking on something that you know you shouldn't and can't handle. Like for instance, probably the most tricky one would be rebuilding a transmission. If you've never done it, if you don't have all the tools and it's not one that you've done before, it's gonna take you way longer than you probably should have or not work out and you still end up having to take it to somebody after burning a week of time. So never overestimate your DIY skills, but definitely lean on them and push yourself to learn something new if it's something that you know you can handle. But you have to be very, very cognizant of your capability. So click this video right here on screen to see how I made thousands in a week flipping cars.